Hey, what's up? Victor Gadere here with Drum Dial, and you may know me as a co-founder of Recordio and the longtime audio engineer of Drumio. And I've had the great pleasure, been very fortunate to work with many of the world's best drummers. And I've tuned and uh, put together and cared for the drum kits uh, that you would have seen um, on many, many of the uh, guest artist lessons uh, with Dromeo. And uh, it's been a blast. So in this lesson, we're gonna talk about one of the most important things about tuning your drums, which is getting the drum in tune with itself. And that basically means that uh, there's no uh, warble in the sound or anything, you know, the heads aren't conflicting with one another. And it's just a nice smooth note, loud projection, Everything that we would want a tom or a snare or anything, everything that we would want a tom uh, to sound like is how we're gonna show you uh, sort of the process to get there. And it's super easy. And so each lug uh, tensions and pulls the head outwards. And inevitably, you know, as I tighten this lug, for example, then it's going to, it's going to pull in that direction, but, you know, equal opposite force, it's actually going to, uh, in essence, you know, pull the head also in the other direction. And so you can imagine the complexity uh, that's involved when you get six or more lugs on the drum and you know there's tensions pulling in all different directions and you want that to all be equal so we have a nice full note. And you know the reason why is that if, if certain lugs or one is out then you get this sort of one 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 warble sound, a beating sound and usually uh, and also possibly more uh, upper harmonics in the drum and without getting too scientific, usually that's perceived as not as pleasant. And so we're gonna eliminate that stuff, get a single note out of the drum. And then, uh, you know, once you're there, then, you know, nine times out of 10, uh, out of 10 we have a, a bottom head, a resonant head on our drums, uh, unless you're back in the 70s. Um, and uh, so now we have an entire second head to deal with and the relationship of how this head is gonna vibrate, uh, move in this direction and you know, move the air and the air is gonna bounce around inside of the drum as well with another head on. And um, so we're gonna talk about the pitch relationship between the two as well. So getting started, we're gonna start with the resonant head first and I'm gonna show you basically just right take it all the way down as if we're putting on a new head. These are relatively new, almost brand new, that we just have tuned them up for some examples, some uh, prior lessons, um, but they're basically brand new. Um, so the difference versus coming right out of the box is that we won't really need to stretch them as much, but I'll still kind of show you what I'm thinking in that regard. So we're just gonna finger tight, we're gonna cut some of the time at certain points in the video um, so that we're not making you sleep and click to another video. Unless it's another drum dive video, then that's okay. So we're just gonna loosen it down here. And so the first step here is to uh, put the legs all at finger tight, tension them all to finger tight. And what I mean by that is you can see in this little camera on the side here, I'm actually gonna lift up from the bottom. Uh, so you can see the little gap in the lug. Moving a little bit too much, there we go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go finger tight. And of course you wanna do this at opposing lugs because right now, as I, tight, as I continue to finger tight, it's actually gonna raise the opposite side, direct the opposing lug directly across. So I want you to make sure that you do finger tight with opposing lugs always. And you just spin the drum around. Whether or not you have this fancy $5 Lazy Susan that Steve built for us or you don't, you can even do this on, on carpet and the drum will still spin as if it were on a Susan. And so we just want to go around like this. Finger tight at opposing lugs. Okay, so at this point, I like to use a double key uh, method because you're still thinking about opposing lugs. Remember when I said finger tight, if I turn this, uh, if I tighten this one, then this side is actually gonna raise slightly, uh, you know, just a very little amount. You may or may not be able to see that. So I, what I like to do at this point when bringing up uh, to start to get a sound, a note, a pitch out of the drum, I like to um, use two keys and tension um, uh, the opposing lugs. So we're just gonna uh, bring this up just a quarter turn all the way around the drum. Okay, so since I did double and there's only six lugs, so now we've gone all the way around the drum. Almost hearing a clear note. There's kind of those sound, <laughs> and so we don't actually have a full note. But there's a, almost a note starting to uh, cre be created here. Okay, so one more quarter turn. Okay, and as I'm, we're getting starting to get a note here now. Okay. 
Okay, and that's actually quite high pitched already. It's sounding like may or may not work for this drum. So I'm actually gonna bring in the drum dial, which is a tensionometer. Measures tension. <laughs> wow. And, uh, and so I'm just gonna see where this is at. And the, the beauty of this tool is that you don't even have to think about um, equalizing the, uh, you know, the tension that's pulling around the drum. You can do that with this tool. So basically I want this to be at approximately uh, 75 around the whole drum. So I'm just gonna check first. I'm gonna get rid of this so I'm not fighting with myself. And so, okay, so we're at, you know, uh, close to 80, 78 on that one, 78-ish. Uh, let's see here, let's see here, 75-ish. Um, 70. Wah, 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 wah. Okay, 76-ish. Uh, so I'm gonna go right now, um, instead of going to that one, see, uh, even when we're tap tuning, uh, if you find a lug that's way down in pitch or, or way up in pitch, don't just go to attack that necessarily right away. Be patient with it, check all of the other lugs. It's easy to be like, oh, well that one's down, crank it up, and then all of the other relative pitches of the lugs will come up as well. So you don't wanna, you know, it's, I call it chasing your tail syndrome with uh, drum tuning. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is because I had a couple medium, that were a little low, I had one really low, I'm gonna go to the really high ones and bring those down first and uh, attack it a, a little bit um, with that sort of strategy. Okay, so I'll show you here. So I'm gonna bring this now, I'm gonna go to 75. And of course we've um, preconditioned the bearing edges, um, not to make this any more of a commercial or anything, but this stuff really works. It's, uh, it doubles as a chapstick, uh, you know, a skin ointment. No, I'm just kidding, Steve is looking at me with the dumbest look right now. And so, so it's not chapstick. So what we do is we just do one swipe around. It's, it's a, 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 a very uh, organic, and like you can touch it. It's non-petroleum based, engineered safe for all wood, plastics and metals. I didn't know plastic and metals as well, that's beautiful. And so it lubricates the bearing edge and I've used this on the worst of worst drums and it like brings it to life. It makes it easy to tune. Um, it may, it, it, um, you know, the, the slipping and that when he, when the drum head is slipping and you know, you hear that cracking noise and stuff, that almost disappears completely when you lubricate the edge of the drum uh, bearing edge with this stuff. I use it every single time I change a drum head on any manufactured kit, no matter what. It really actually helps it, it um, proves it, uh, the tuning process a lot. Okay, so we brought that down to 75, and I'm not gonna change any other ones yet. I'm actually gonna check them all, because all of the relative pitches have dropped. I guarantee it. Okay, so we still have that one that's super low at 70, and all the other ones, what do you know, are almost all at 75. Okay, a little bit above on that one. Okay, so I'm still gonna take the ones that are above and I'm gonna bring them down and then inevitably we're gonna bring the whole drum uh, back up, of course, okay? Okay, so we go to that low, um, that low lug and I'm gonna bring it up now to 75. Okay, and at this point, before even tap tuning um, around each lug, I'm gonna religiously go lug to lug. I'm not gonna jump over any and look for a high lug or a low lug or any stuff like that. I'm just gonna go to each one in a circular pattern now that I have attacked um, the lugs that were very high and very low. At this point, I'm gonna go around in a circle maybe about two times. And the whole thing will just be nice and even. And I always like to, if it's too high, like to drop the note below, just like a guitar uh, string, if you've any guitarists out there. I can just see in the comments, guitars suck, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> this is for drummers, <laughs> all good. But what we do is uh, we want to tune up into the note. It's just something that I've brought over from any stringed instrument, um, just that, that sort of, uh, school of thought. Why, you ask? Because the uh, lug could potentially slip downwards if it was already, if you last touched it in sort of a loosening downward motion. All right, so now we're ready to tap tune the drum. And uh, what I mean by that is essentially, uh, you know, making sure that each lug uh, is, produces the same pitch. So we tap the drum uh, at the same velocity, with the same stick and everything, at the same distance away from the rim, um, right beside each lug, and inevitably we'll have, we'll hear a pitch. 
And so we want the pitch to be equal, so we tension the, the, that particular like, up or down. And also I wanted to mention, this is a little bit of a higher pitch, but we want to tune the drum head into the mid-range of the drum. And what I mean by that is there's a, the lowest of low where the uh, head craps out and, and, and starts to sound papery and thin and, and as we were when we were first tensioning that kind of sound. Um, and then when it's too high, it can start to choke it. Although rules are meant to be broken, as I always say, uh, you know, you could <laughs> great jazz drums are cranked uh, or great uh, jazz drummers crank their drums up. Uh, we had Mark Giuliano I was just working with a, a few months ago. And I mean, he had them really high. I mean, I had them, I tuned them up jazz high, perfect intervals and everything, just beautifully resonating, singing. And then he cranked them up even more. But uh, he's absolutely beautiful musician and, and it really made his voice sing on the drums. Um, so again, you know, rules are kind of meant to be broken and also even um, taking the notes way out of them and going way down below the mid-range of the drum is okay too. Just know that you lose articulation and stuff. You don't have sustain in the drum. It just gets thuddy and uh, more attack based, which is okay for rock in certain scenarios. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap tune around the drum and just uh, try to pick out if there's any lugs that are, um, you know, slightly off from one another and I'll talk about that process and away we go. Okay, so first off, aside from some of the slight variations among the in, among the individual lugs, I'm hearing high and high. And uh, actually, at first I was just hearing, you know, a, a note, and then I heard that higher and then lower. Before even going around the rest of the drum, I know, 98% sure, that the opposing lug from the one that was high is going to be high as well. So, for the most part, you have a low lug, it's gonna be, you know, similar to, it's gonna, the opposing lug is gonna be low as well. So what I'm hearing is high, high, low, low. And, and that's like sort of the X-wing pattern. So, so low, 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 high, high. Okay, so at this point, oh, you have a crossroads. Do we, do we bring these ones down or these ones up a bit? I think the drum is sounding a little bit high pitched in general right now. So I'm actually gonna bring these two opposing lugs. I'm not just gonna go to one, that's a, a, a mistake that I've made myself many times. Um, I'm not necessarily just gonna go only to one at this point uh, because I know that that opposing lug is gonna be uh, very similarly, you know, tension at that high, or it's gonna have that higher pitch as well. So I'm actually just gonna, just gonna drop those two just slightly and see where it sits and then carry on from there. And I'll probably now stick more to the exact circular pattern here. Let's listen. Great, so once you have the drum head in tune with itself, you should be hearing more of predominantly just one single note, less of the harmonics, the upper notes that are ringing true uh, when you actually strike the drum head as well. So now uh, you want to be thinking about the pitch relationship between the bottom, we started at the rezzo head, and the top, the batter head. And so I'm not gonna show you the, um, uh, the tensioning uh, process and stuff like that. It's the exact same process. Finger tight, um, you know, bring a, the, the drum up to creating a note uh, with, with tension. And then, uh, you know, get the drum dial and, um, you know, even out the actual tensions of each individual lugs and then go for the tap tuning, circular motion. Um, and then what we wanna do is think about what pitch is this head and what pitch is that head. Now, my highest recommendation is to have the top and bottom heads the exact same pitch for any genre, from metal to jazz. And uh, the reason why is because when they're resonating um, and uh, you know vibrating at the exact same frequency, uh, then uh, we get the maximum sustain, the maximum note out of the drum. And it's, it, it does uh, perceive to be louder. Uh, so amplitude is, is loudest. And basically what I call that is the drum is singing in its fullest potential or to its fullest potential. And uh, from there, dependent on genre and player, 
we can change uh, the sustain of the notes and the the volume of the note, uh, the volume of the of the uh, sound source of the drum, uh, by a couple of ways. We can do that with further tuning or and or muffling. And so I say with tuning because if, for example, one of the most common things the the rezo head is tighter than the uh, batter head, that will render less sustain uh, because now they're not they're vibrating uh, asymmetri asymmetrically with one another and they're not going to produce that uh, beautiful pure note and, and so um, the sustain will be less and you can also knock the sustain down with um, uh, with some muffling you know and that's totally cool totally normal to do uh, the, the way that I set up drums for uh, every drummer that I've ever worked with, uh, you know, all these, the, the, uh, many of the world's best drummers have been very fortunate to work with them. Um, you know, I, I, this is my template starting point, is I tune all the shells to perfect fourth intervals, uh, if they're two inch increments uh, in diameter uh, difference, and I make sure that the top and bottom heads are identical pitches. And then from there, that's the template starting point that has worked beautifully. It's been bulletproof for every single drummer I've ever worked with. Okay, so now we want to pitch match the top and the bottom head. And, um, you know, I do have the mute still on the table. And uh, I'm going to be lifting the drum up, checking, and then changing the pitch like this. And then eventually we'll hold the thing in the air and check the overall uh, drum. As we don't play drums on a table like this, we play them up in the air. And so I want to mention we have a uh, Remo Ambassador coated. It's a 10 mil. Uh, single ply head and then we have an ambassador clear on the bottom 10 mil single ply this just has a nice coating on it now uh, a lot of uh, drummers will have a two ply on the top and a single ply on the bottom and they would think that if you uh, tune them both to even without tap tuning or whatever if you tune them to attention with the drum dial at 75 for example that they should be the same pitch well inherently that is not true the double ply head will be lower pitched Okay, so now let's check the top and bottom relationship uh, where they're sitting. From my memory, I'm feeling that, that this, this uh, batter head is close to what we ended up with on the Rezo. So let's just bring this over onto the sponge. Sure, onto the sponge. And so now we're just going to um, uh, check the pitch of each of the uh, sides of the drum. Okay, so you should be hearing that as well. This is slightly higher than the batter head. So I'm actually gonna flip it back over and just bring it up a little bit on the batter, all the way around the drum circular. And the turns that I'm doing here are just the, the most minimal you could possibly imagine uh, when uh, pitching it upwards. Okay, so it's really close, really close, maybe not perfectly perfect. So what I want to do now is bring it up in the air and hear it in all its glory. That's great. It's starting to sound like more of a, a real tom now. Cool, so as you can hear, this is sounding like a real nice 12-inch uh, tom. It is a, a little bit of a higher pitch, you could say. Uh, it's still within the mid-range of the tuning of the drum, but you could bring uh, the note down, the overall note, both heads, down a little bit if you want more of a rock tuning. Uh, it's sitting uh, in a nice position for a jazz tuning, um, or even even like funk toms and stuff like that, uh, you know, this would work well in multi-genre. But I think if you're looking more for the thuddy uh, rock sound, you might want to bring just the overall pitch down uh, a bit, a few steps here. So this will record 
very, very well. If you, you know, record a song for whatever genre or, it, you know, or performing uh, live, you know, using this kind of tuning method will make the drums sing. And if, uh, if for example, you're in a live scenario and you, you need to, you know, quiet everything down, uh, well, you could just take this exact method and, uh, you know, muffle the drum or uh, change the top-bottom relationship. Um, but, you know, try always to, to equalize the pitches of each of the lugs around your drum. It just has a lot better of a feeling to the listener, to the other person, you know, to somebody standing over there or listening to the recording uh, or to the audio engineer or producer uh, recording the music. Maybe they won't go over to their sample library and, and uh, replace your toms if you tune them well and if you play them well, of course. Um, the, I'm, I'm a large proponent for you know not sampling things. I like to capture it with the artists and, and uh, their equipment and the studio and the studio equipment all at the source, and I don't like to modify that with different recorded sounds at all, if at all possible. In certain situations, we have to. And so, in the comment section, we'd love to hear which is your favorite uh, top-bottom pitch relationship with a drum. Is it uh, A, equal pitch, top and, and uh, batter and rezzo? Is it B, higher pitched rezzo, or C, lower pitched rezzo? You know, let us know, let the trolls convene, let's hear it, I wanna hear everything you got, or different weird wacky tuning combinations. Um, you know, let's, let's share around um, uh, our experiences with the beautiful community. And thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Drum Dial on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and if you want to find out more about the world's number one drum tuning tool, then just check out drumdial.com. Well, thanks so much, and we'll see you in some more lessons.